Hi. Hello, and welcome to the new show, Chumps of New Show. I'm Tom Cristiano. Well, tonight I'm very excited because we have a special guest whom I'm a big fan of. Uh, her name is Charlie Smith, and I think she's a great singer, comic, and I think she's going to be a huge star. So I'm so glad to be able to uh, interview her today. Welcome to the show, Charlie. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here, Charlie. And I just found out today that your father is Paul Sullivan, yeah. who was a famous uh, political talk show host on the radio, on 5 on 5 on TV. Yeah. He used to host the St. Patrick's Day Breakfast in Lowell. WBC's so, Paul Sullivan. That's yeah. the way he used to introduce himself. <laughs> so you're Paul Sullivan's daughter. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did he have many children? Did you have many siblings? Um, I have an older brother, Ryan, who uh, is a former uh, assistant district attorney for the Middlesex County, and he's now practicing private law in Lowell um, and a couple other areas. He's like he wears cufflinks and he's like he's a he's a business. He's a real person grown yeah. up. <laughs> um, and I have a little sister who's a mother of three children. And I don't understand how she is so together. She has three kids, and I have two, and it's you have two just children. yeah, hers are so cute. But just having three kids in general is she's a superhero. Wow. Well, Paul Solomon had been on my show many times yeah. back in the '90s, early 2000s, and uh, he was always a great guest because he knew so much about politics and didn't mind expressing his opinion. Same with yeah. you, right, yeah. Charlie? I definitely uh, have taken that from him. And it's cool even with this, uh, being on this show and different things that I've been doing in the Merrimack Valley, it really feels like I'm following him in his, uh, in his footsteps in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, just a little more focused on the comedy side than the political side. He was a lot more politically based and he kind of hid, like snuck the entertainment parts in, I think. So we ha are sort of mirrored in that way. I remember that very well, yeah. yes. I, I was even on his radio show one time I'm going into the studio there in Lowell, and yeah, and that was nice. I'll never forget that. Uh, <laughs> that was a cool transition to see him go from the LLH station to um, WBZ in Boston, too, because I used to go to visit him at LLH, and then every Friday, we, you know, one of us would go and hang out with him in the station. It was just really cool to see uh, that progression of starting local, and then he got a little uh, bigger scaled. Yes, yeah. I think it was every Sunday morning that they'd have five and five or six. Yeah. It might, it might have been Sunday mornings. I don't even, I don't remember what day of the week. I used to watch like the first couple minutes and then I, I just would tune out because I didn't understand at the time. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah what you the were new, very young. Yeah, then, I was right? pretty young when he started doing yeah. five on five. Or maybe I was just ignorant at the time. I was probably like 18. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, you, you love politics, though, and local politics, and you were telling me you were holding signs in Chumsford Center. I was. During our, lo just before our local election, mm -hmm. it was on a Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. it so was, what was that like? It was really fun. Um, I, any opportunity, what's funny is I would be there in the common dancing and trying to get attention all the time if it wouldn't, you know, get me arrested. I, I love being weird in traffic. I sing in traffic to people, like if I'm just driving, like, yeah, especially cops, I really like like making eye contact, be like, hi, boo, what's up, going? And <laughs> so I was doing that, holding signs, um, and it was just a blast, like it was really fun. And oh. I, you know, some people just ignore you, but a lot of people were like, yeah, rock on. I <laughs> so, wish I videotaped that, I, that would have been great. There were people that had their phones out in traffic, and I probably caught, oh, I eventually traffic. moved, oh. yes, because I was like, yeah, that might be kind of dangerous. I should have been there that day, but I was, was biking fun. earlier that morning and didn't get there in time. Time. But that's fantastic. That would have been maybe next year. Will you promise to do I'm it? I'm really next looking year? forward to next year because I didn't well, think of it until that Let morning. Me know, okay? Yeah, I will I'll, for sure. I'll come and do a clip for the Trumps or news. Yeah, that would be cool. It'd be great. But I, um, well, the first video I saw of you, which we'll talk about later, was you doing a gift wrapping segment uh, on Trumps or Telemedia. Yeah. And then you bought this so-called scissor paper cutting thing, which didn't work well. Piece of crap. That thing was, was just so, terrible. <laughs> that, that was so funny to me, the way, you know, it just you just bought it. You were so excited about it, and then it wasn't working. It's was like $12. It was yeah. really infuriating. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was so good. I, I called or wrote to Pete saying, wow, she's great. She's, you got to have her on so many shows or have her own show. And then we'll talk about later. You are going to have your own show yeah. and everything and stand up. But... But also, then after that clip, I saw your clip of you on American Idol. Yep. And you you actually were the one that was aired, too, right, on TV and... Yeah, I got about 45 minutes of airtime, I think, is what I counted at the time. Wow. Yeah, I was, um, uh, I was the crazy one on my season. I don't know why I'm doing quotes. Everyone knows oh. I'm nuts. But um, <laughs> I was the entertainment factor on my season, for sure. Um, so that was a really life-changing experience, um, to say the least, yeah. 
And I get a little mad at this guy. His name is Randy, right? One of the judges there. And there was Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. And Steven Tyler, Steve right? Steven Tyler is the man. He's awesome. And they were kind of nice. Steven and Jennifer were kind of going along with your singing. And Randy said no to me every single round. I made it, I made it um, based on uh, Jennifer Lopez and Steven Tyler, Steven? and that's it. And thank God for them. You, you yeah. were great. And... I'm so glad when they let you through finally to the next it, round. It's funny. I don't know. Um, I don't know technically how much like I'm allowed to talk about, but like, so in the original clip when they show for the audition, it's a five minute audition is what you see. But I was in there for 20 minutes. I sang three songs, and um, I don't remember what Randy Jackson said to me, but he said something that made me start to cry, and then it's uh, it's just clipped kind of weird. So it's not out of con it's not like it's yeah. fake, you know what I mean? Well, it yeah. is kind of fake, but it's not, it's more that they um, really only show the highlights. So it yeah. sort of tells its own I story. I saw that video too, the yeah. other one you talked about. Oh, oh, you're talking about confessional. That's the confessional, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's what makes it like such an exhausting process, because you go and you sing, but then you have to stand in this line like cattle, and then they put you in front of a camera, and you have to like say a whole thing of like, how you're feeling and they ask you all these questions and at one point another contestant I had a, a camera guy that was assigned to me like he was just on me all the time and nobody else really had that and I so eventually one other contestant was like hey how many interviews have you done and I was like today she's like no at all and I was like I don't know like 40 50 she's like oh I haven't done any I was like what like are you kidding me so they sort of uh are on top of the people they know they're gonna get big reactions from and big conversations from yeah you were very vivacious, entertaining. You had a great voice. Oh, so thanks. That's why I, hopefully you're going to be a huge star someday. And singing uh, is nationally. more nationally. Singing is more um, uh, a side note to what I like to do. I really I take karaoke very seriously. I really <laughs> love karaoke, um, but singing is sort of my. Uh, uh, Avenue of entertaining people, but it's really comedy that I'm that I try to do and I don't know if I think as a musician I'm not very good and I think as a comedian I'm not very good But I think if you put them together somehow it, it makes me a little more calm and I get into the groove nice. um, Tim Minchin I actually heard he's a comic that I'm very influenced by he actually sort of said the same thing for himself yeah. Um but yeah. In fact you're hope hosting an open mic night mm -hmm. at the Trump's Center for the Arts at the cabaret room downstairs. April 19th. Yeah. April 19th, Friday at 8 p.m., right? Mm -hmm. Yep. How about starting it at 7? No, for old people like <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I my <laughs> sitter, My sitter doesn't come through till then, so it's, oh, it's I pretty to, strict yeah. on time. But, um, but yeah, the open mic is um, something I've been really hoping to do for a long time because I'm into community. Like, I really like the idea of encouraging other people because yeah. the thing that people say to me the most is that I'm brave. And I just think that's the weirdest, like I'm not at all, like people in the military are brave. Like I just, I just don't care. I just talk a lot. So I like the idea of creating an environment where people can feel brave, you know, or, and they feel comfortable to try out their artistic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And you plan to do it about once a month, I understand? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. So, cause this show may air after your next one coming up on mm -hmm. April 19th. But do you generally, are you gonna hold it like the third Fridays of the month? Or um, have you figured it out? They're on the CCA website right now. They're scheduled so oh. you can go on to the CCA's website. For the next website. few months you have in there? For the next year, Susan Gates oh, good. will be on. Great. Um, yeah, so. I get it. Where's the CCA, where can people find their schedule? Um, their website, Trump's I don't Arts? know. Yeah, the Chelms, I think oh, it's Chelmsford Maybe they Arts. Can find it there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, oh yeah, Chelmsford Arts. Or it's dot org, I'm not sure. Or dot org. Susan's yeah. gonna kill me that I don't, <laughs> that I don't know what it is. Well, yeah. I'm hoping to come to, you, to your next one and probably many, many after that. Because like I said, I think you're very talented. Oh, I want to hear you sing. I like hearing stand-up comedy. I yeah. think you're going to be great with that. Oh, thanks. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, so as we mentioned, you were on American Idol. And um, there's a great clip. It's about two minutes long of you on American Idol. And you're singing with three other women, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I guess you're part of good. You were on the right side. Mm -hmm. Oh, and your name then was Ashley, right? Mm -hmm. That was before I came out as queer. I came out um, as transgender in 2016. Oh, this was 2011, right? The, the, the clips, American yeah, Idol. yeah, I was on Idol back then. So, so 2011, yeah. so 2016, you changed your name to Charlie Smith. I think it was 2016, yeah. yeah. I, I've kind of always, a lot of people in my life weren't surprised at all. I was, I was always, I always said I was a gay guy stuck in a female body, um, which has, that definition has definitely evolved, but, um, 
But yeah, so I, I decided to change my name for uh, a lot of reasons, but the, it's funny because American Idol wasn't one of them, and I feel like a lot of people think that, that I like wanted to get away from it, but oh, I don't yeah. at all. Like I, I really I like my experience there. Oh yeah, um, I hope so. But yeah, if anything, it, it probably hurt me to change my name because now people are like, oh wait, were you on? And, you know, oh. It's whatever. But nice, Charlie Smith. It's easy to remember anyway. Yeah, Charlie liked the chocolate factory. That's what yeah. I always tell people. <laughs> like and Smith like John. That's John Will Smith. Smith's my legal last name. That's my husband's last name. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, my husband's uh, Ethan Smith. He was actually on the um, Dean's show here on CTM. Oh. I nice. don't know the name of that show. But, yeah. Why did he, uh, why was he on He's a veteran. He was in the military. He did oh, two I deployments see. in Afghanistan. Wow, so, yeah. nice. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, he's the man. Nice. Well, uh, so we were talking about this American Idol clip. It's about two, three minutes or something. But I hope everybody at home takes a minute to watch this clip of Charlie singing. And um, her name was Ashley back then in 2011. And now uh, please watch uh, this clip of Charlie on American Idol back in 2011. It's been a very emotional week, especially for Ashley. She uh, quit the competition last night. She's back in. What will happen? Hey, hey, hey. While he was scheming, I was beaming in my beamer, just beaming. I can't believe that I call a man cheating. So I found a better way to make him pay for it all. So I went to Neiman Marcus on a shopping spree. And on the way, I grabbed soda and meal. And as the cash box rang, I thought everything was. There goes the trees we used to say. There goes the time we spent. Ashley shows no fear, but is it enough to get her through to the next round? Ashley, it was a little pitchy here and there, right? But all in all, I mean, you held it together, and I must say, you guys were the best harmonized group I have seen. You're all going through! <laughs> Taking Ashley back in the group was a huge risk. Tell her like it is. That girl better hurt somebody. <laughs> but in one night, they all found a way to believe in each other and themselves. So as you could see in that clip, how great Charlie sings. I, to me, it's amazing because I can't sing for anything. And Charlie has this wonderful voice. Thanks. And you, you seem so um, enthusiastic and vivacious on the show. It's, Does uh, that come naturally to you? You, uh, um, I, you I kind of can't help being obnoxious. Like, I can't help oh, no, but be myself. Um, as yeah. far as singing, I started singing in, like, seventh grade. Uh, and then my grandfather actually sent me to um, singing lessons. And it was back when Britney Spears had first come out. I don't know if you know Britney Spears is my hero. She's like my Elvis. She's I a heard goddess. That, yes. I love her. And so I showed up with a tape um, of Britney Spears because she said to bring a song to sing along to. So I put it in, and it was Autumn Goodbye off her first single, which nobody knows that song, but it's a great jam. And I started singing Autumn Goodbye. And the singing teacher told me that I couldn't sing. She was like, you need to pick an instrument. This isn't for you. Oh. And, I, and I, I believed her, and I, I just stopped. Oh. And then, um, oh and I had a couple other incidents like that where people would kind of, like, stifle me because I would sing in character. Um, so then I got to college, and uh, my professor, Karen Oster, uh, was doing a musical, and I had done the spring, like, straight show, like a regular show. And she came up and was like, hey, you should try it for the musical. And I was like, oh, I'm tone deaf. I can't sing. And she was like... I've heard you singing to yourself. Who told you that? And I was like, oh, a couple people when I was a kid, whatever. And she was like, just come to the audition. And she had me play a scale. And at the end of it, she was just like, 
I don't know who told, that's, uh, okay. And I got three leads in the show, like three lead parts. Wow. And it just kind of dominoed from there. And I always had this like arrogant confidence after that of just like, I can too sing. Like, you can, So I just yeah. don't care. And now if people don't like my singing, I assume they don't like show tunes or they don't like loud voices. They would prefer a male voice or whatever. Um, and I just don't take it personal anymore. So it just doesn't yeah. scare me because you're never going to get everybody in an audience. Not everybody loves Celine Dion. That doesn't mean Celine Dion isn't a goddess in her own right. Yes. So I just do my thing. It's comedy that's intimidating to me. Like, oh. if I get up and make a joke and you don't laugh, like, that's yeah. Yes, I know it hurts. Like, oh, yeah, that's, like, that's scary. But, yeah. So on your stand-up, I mean, when the open mic nights, you're going to sing. Do you, you play an instrument, too, or you say just sing? I can play guitar. To be honest, the songs that I, the only songs I really ever played on guitar are really dirty songs. Like, they're, like, they're just very adult material. One of them's called Adult Content. That's the name of the song. Um, and I just sort of moved away from that. Not really for any reason, um, but yeah, so I don't really play guitar in my act anymore. It will probably come back in the next year or two when I get sick of like the puppets and well, other stuff. Well, it comes stuff. in handy when you're singing sometimes to have a guitar accompaniment. <laughs> it really, that's my own. biggest frustration is not being able to accompany myself, but I yeah. think, I don't want to like um, uh, give away my own plot like Dr. Evil, but I think I'm going to start just using karaoke, just like shamelessly singing oh, with karaoke idea. tracks. Yeah, you could just Put that in there, right? Yeah, because I get a lot of really great response. Karaoke is how I ended up on American Idol. I, I think that would be great. Yeah, I, would, I was going to a karaoke spot every week, and the, there was an audition coming up, and the karaoke DJ was like, hey, you should audition. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't think I'd be good on TV. Like, reality TV, they'll see me, like, you know, picking my butt or something like that. Yeah, I said, you know what I mean? You don't want to sign up to be on reality TV. And he did a charity for all the people that used to come and watch me do karaoke, and they raised like $600 for me to go to New Jersey and try out. So oh, I was like, nice. that nice. that was kind of a big um, confidence boost nice. going into it. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so we talked about your singing. Maybe at your open mic night, you're going to sing. Maybe have I'll the karaoke yeah. machine in yeah. the background. Then other people could come and bring their instruments, oh, whatever so. they do, and then you're gonna do some comedy. Could we talk a little about your comedy? What kind of comedy do you do? Is it similar to any nationally known comics? Um, or, well. Or do you write your own material? I, I do write my own material. I, uh, uh, Maria Bamford is one of my biggest influences. Um, uh, Tim, uh, excuse me, uh, Bill Hicks is also one of my biggest ones as well, who is, is no longer alive. Um, but I, uh, I've Jim followed, Gaffigan, you like a little I do like Jim Gaffigan. Something. I'm not really influenced um, with my material by him, yeah. but I watch hundreds of comics. Like, I'll watch everybody. But, yeah, me too. Um, me too. You know, like Janine Garofalo is somebody I really like, but I wouldn't say that I take after her in any way. I talk about really personal stuff. Like Richard Pryor is somebody who would take his tragedies and talk about them on stage. And I really like doing that. I like talking about um, the loss of my dad. I talk about um, being uh, institutionalized after um, having a kid because I had postpartum depression, oh. which not a lot of people really talk about. Definitely not in a funny way. Um, so there's, it, it's a lot of real stuff that I like to talk about. And I like to take intimidating topics and making them really light and funny and fun not fun, but That's easier. what I was going to ask you. How do you take those heavy topics and make them funny uh, um, for everyone? Well, it's, it's just funny. I mean, like, there's people in my family that have really dark senses of humor. And, like, at my dad's, I think at my dad's wake is when we started cracking jokes. Because it's just how do you get through something like that without just lighting it up a little bit. And um, it doesn't mean you're making light of the situation, but it's kind of healing yourself. And um, especially... In my case, for uh, the tragedies that I've gone through life, when I just talk to people about it, I never talk about it in a good way. I've never had uh, luck with therapy, because if I go to therapy, I end up just doing a bit. Like, I'll just, I'll talk, like, the therapist ends up laughing the whole time, and I don't actually talk about anything, because when you talk about, when I talk about heavy stuff, I always try to just, I don't even try. It's just, that's the easiest way to communicate with people about with something. Humor, right? Yeah, it's with humor. Nice, wow. Um, well, speaking of the humor, one of the things you do is you work with puppets, too, don't you? I do. I, do you bring puppets to your open mics, or are you going to bring No, oh, I no, work, really? I, uh, I, I have a, um, a comedy partner that I'm starting to work with, Nancy Albertson, who I love. And she and I are maybe working on something with the puppets. But um, to be honest, the puppets were out of necessity. I have no passion for puppetry. I don't, I've never, it's never been on my radar. Oh. Um, but I, when I came to CTM and met Pete, who's in the booth right now, I had told him um, I wanted a show. I wanted like a daily show. And I couldn't find correspondence. So I just started talking to my hand. And um, Are it, you doing that show now? 
Yeah, so it's um, it's evolved from just like a daily show thing to a little more elaborate. I'm, it's called Who's Pulling the Strings, and it's a Merrimack version, a Merrimack Valley version of Saturday Night Live. And my goal is to um, cover exclusively local politics. I don't want to talk about anything, no walls. I don't want to talk about anything polarizing yeah. on a national scale. But yeah. um, like I found out this weekend that there's a law in Lowell that no three adults can live in one house unless they're related. And really? it's just, yeah, that's isn't that nuts? That's and, nuts yeah. and there's nuance to it. Like, like there's some things that make, make sense about it and there's other things that I think are a little outdated, but like, why not talk about that? You know what I mean? Like yeah. I just, you know, and in working in public access, um, I'm just attending different meetings and I'm seeing different um, political things that I would normally just not be aware of. And I think it would be kind of cool to talk about those things um, uh, in a fun way and just have skits and stuff around it. And you did a nice clip for um, Robert's Field with the puppets recently. That, was, that fun. was nice. Yeah. So you used definitely not my best singing <laughs> like ever. I watched well, the clip. I was like, oh dear God, it was I'm like glad a it's jazz to be funny. thing or something. You yeah. were like doing sounds <laughs> yeah. like. Um, oh, so you, you have your own TV show. It's called Pulling. Uh, Who's pulling the strings? Who's pulling the strings? And people could view that, for example, on Chelmsford Telemedia um, on YouTube. On, on it, I think one of the episodes is on Chelmsford Telemedia's YouTube channel, and oh. the rest of them are uh, probably on mine, which is Why Charlie the Artist. All on the, that's where I watch it on the YouTube channels on Chelmsford Telemedia. Could you get them over there? But then I wouldn't get the likes, and I. Oh, no, and keep them here, too. <laughs> no, but, oh, like, I have, them. so I have a YouTube channel that is just, like, my YouTube channel. So it's, like, all of my different stuff. So, like, oh, my holiday clips. What's your YouTube channel? Yeah, YouTube I think it's Charlie called? the Artist is the Oh, I think I subscribe to that. Yeah. yeah. You do. You're one of three subscribers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I loved your uh, gift wrapping videos I, really I, I started the yeah. show with. Um, but that was, that was hilarious, wasn't Thank it? You. When you get this scissors. Kind of scissors, but it's a round cylinder thing, and it doesn't work properly. Nope. There's no shortcuts with gift wrapping. You got to so, do it the right way. You know, you're going through. Wasn't that hilarious? Maddening. Though? Not was at it, the time. It, oh, you were serious <laughs> was about so that. that. You were so frustrated, and you go, eleven dollars for this or twelve? <laughs> garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that the way with Amazon? Like, I'll buy. I, that just happens to me so much that I'll get something on Amazon thinking it'll help my life, and it yeah. doesn't at all. But a lot of times, I've returned things to Amazon with, if they're worth more. Yeah, right. It's right. worth it to return it. They've been good about it. Yeah. I think very good. So you have your show you're talking about. Do you pr produce it here in Lowell? Did you? Say? Um, you I so far show? I've been doing it out of CTM. I recently had. Um, I'm now a municipal producer at Lowell Telecommunications. So um, I'm recruiting people from that studio. So I'm going to be interviewing um, a couple bigger names that I've met through the Lowell pol political scheme or scape. Um, <laughs> scheme. And uh, so. It's technically through Chelmsford. I kind of have a tie to Chelmsford in a lot of ways, mainly because I live here right now. Um, but like again, when I walked in here and I was like, "Hey, I want a show." Like Diane was just awesome. She's been so insanely helpful, and I really like um, bringing more attention to this specific uh, station. Uh -huh. And Lowell doesn't need my help really. So um, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I think you should do tons of shows, as many as you can. Because I would you're literally so do talented. as many as I could. I just need. Uh, crews. Maybe do. How about you stand up on a TV show or get it recorded at the CCA? I I record it. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, and uh, so you could show them here on Chumps and mm -hmm. Telemedia. Yeah. That would be great. I have a couple of my stand up bits are on um, my YouTube channel right now, um, so you can find those there. But yeah, I think it's just an eight minute clip right now of the last open mic. Oh, I have to see that. And where could I find that? In Chumps or Telemedia? No, I think Char Charlie, Charlie the Artist, yeah. I got to see. I didn't notice it yet, but I'll look for it. Right so you have so many uh, things going on, yeah, so do. many open mics and shows. And and you you said you like local politics, too. You might get more involved in that. You live here in Chelmsford, I guess, mm -hmm. for a couple of years now, right? Yeah. In Precinct 2, do mm -hmm. I understand? I just moved to Precinct 2 this month. I was in oh, Precinct 1 prior oh, to that. Oh, so now you're in Precinct 2? Mm -hmm. uh, you have a condo there or something, a house or whatever? Uh, yeah, we live in, I live in the subsidized housing across from the trailer park, um, which is... In North Chelmsford? Uh, no, oh. right on the Westford line. Oh, that's Precinct... Uh, 
Oh, and I'm wrong because I just moved there. I'm still waiting for my voter registration. Yesterday I had I to vote in precinct, precinct one. Five. The one on Littleton oh, okay. Road? Yep. Maybe precinct five. I'll check. I, I literally went to change my voter registration. Everybody should learn more about voter registration. You should learn more about that. But so, or voting in general. Um, but I went to uh, update it, and they were like, "Oh, you needed to do this two weeks ago." And I was like, "Ah!" So I voted wow. in precinct one. I voted for Joe Reedy. Um, but yeah. I see. Yeah. Nice. Well, that. So you're in the new um, subsidized housing, you might mm -hmm. say, in Littleton Road. Yeah. They're great, right? Yeah. They're really nice. They which nice is one day. of the reasons that I want to be a voice in Chelmsford because I feel like maybe the lower income families don't really get as loud of a voice here because it is an affluent area. Um, so I definitely like to just be a thorn in the side, just kind of sitting there like, hey, we're here too. Well, that's why I hope you do run for town meeting representative, maybe next April or something. Yeah, I had talked about it um, with a couple of friends of mine and with the, my moving, to be honest, that's the only reason that I didn't. Um, oh, okay. Cause but I didn't maybe know. next year. Yeah. But you could also see if you're concerned how many candidates there are. Yeah, right, Sometimes right. If they you could get it where there aren't even that many candidates and yeah. it won't be competitive mm -hmm. or something like that. It's very easy. I like a good competition, so either okay. way. <laughs> oh, good. Either way, challenge. yeah. <laughs> and as we mentioned in the early part of the show, you're Paul Su Sullivan's daughter, mm -hmm. and everybody knows and likes your father, Paul Sullivan. Yeah, I, that doesn't necessarily translate all the time. Uh, I think that a lot of times, like when I was on Idol, um, I, I had people that would like heckle the fact they'd be like oh he's he must be really embarrassed from the grave like I had somebody like write that online on the Boston Globe website like he's rolling in his grave and um, oh, why about just that I'm an embarrassment because oh, which is fine god. don't oh my god it's hilarious oh. people going online and tweeting about me but is my feel fit. terrible that's oh terrible. feel terrible what some guy like sat in his house and yeah, was like this I know. oh it, it it's hilarious one of my favorite things that was tweeted about me was that I look like Parker Posey on meth She's gorgeous. I'll take it. Yeah, like, I like Parker Posey. Yeah. I, it's just Wasn't funny. she in the show about the dogs? Yes, the best in show. Best like in To show. be compared to She's her hilarious. on her worst day would be amazing. I so know a I lot of like, these comments. Great. I'm big but, on them. But yeah, and I had, I had, yeah. I had uh, the first thing, one of the things tweeted about me was that I look like a cafeteria lady from West Virginia who smoked menthol basics for 10 years too long. Like, that's hilarious. Like, that person <laughs> sat around and was like, who does she remind me of? And, like, I, maybe I'm just meant to be on roasts or something like that, but, like, I genuinely. You get on the roast oh, on HBO. So You'd funny. be great. You know what I want is the roast in Lowell. I want to get the St. Patrick's Day roast yeah. next year. I was I was putting a bug in people's ear about that. I hope that. you can. That would oh, be, be great. A, that would be a dream come true for me. I think you could be in all these shows that we have here, Lowell and Chumpsford. And well, you're even saying I don't really want to be national. Like, I like the you idea of. No. I, I mean, like, I've moved to Hollywood, and that was cool. I mean, Grant, if somebody offered me $10 million, yeah. I'm not going to say no to it, but... Yeah. Um, oh, but you, yeah, were, you were living in Los yep. Angeles? Or oh, Hollywood? yeah. Right after American Idol, I lived in Hollywood right off Sunset for two years. And how was that? It was it was cool. I mean, I partied a lot, and, and um, I got... I, uh, I moved out there for singing, and I got... Um, the acting bug as far as um, comedy. So I started going to um, Upright Citizens Brigade, which um, is started by a, a number of my heroes, including Amy Poehler. Um, so uh, I'm halfway through the program there. I started in LA and I'm finishing it in New York. And um, at Los Angeles was life changing. I got, I got really into mixed martial arts there and I became uh, way more informed about the UFC world, which is just random, but I really like, um, uh, MMA and comedy, those were things that I found in Hollywood. And then I became a parent, so I decided that Hollywood was probably not the best place for my oh, kids. For your children. Yeah, so we moved back here. Back here, mm -hmm. first to Lowell or right to um, Trump? No, we lived in Nashua. Oh, okay. We lived in Nashua, Nashua for a bit. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful, Charlie. And also, your grandfather was a state representative, right? Yeah, my saying? grandfather, Kevin. He um, Sullivan? Yeah, Kevin, Kevin Sullivan. Sullivan was. Yeah. Your, a state rep? He was, a, he was, I believe, the first state rep from Tewksbury. Um, and nice, I, nice. yeah, so it's kind of cool to see. Um, politics was just so heavily ingrained in my childhood. Like, I feel like a lot of people, it's rude to talk about politics. And at my dinner table, like, you were just yelling about politics. That's all we talked about was politics. Wow, nice. So now it's kind of neat to be um, getting myself involved in the conversation because before I would, it was the only time I would be quiet is if politics were up because I was like, oh, I'm out of my, I'm out of my realm. But now I'm sort of getting uh, a little less intimidated. It sounds like yeah. it. With your sign holding Saturday at the I local election. I was very invested in that. Yeah, I was really invested in that I can't wait election. to see a video of that. Or If not, we're going to get some next year. Oh, Please let me know. Send me a quick email when you're heading out we'll there. Do. 
And um, is there anything else we should talk about before we go, Charles? And a couple, of, uh, Charlie, for a couple of seconds. No, I like Charles. It's formal. Um, oh, yeah. I, uh, I call my friend Charlie. <laughs> I call him Charles. Yeah. I think it's more respectful. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, here, I like respect. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If people want to come out to the open mic, it's April nineteenth at the CCA, um, and subscribe to my Instagram, LGBT Charlie. Um, LGBT Charlie. On Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah, and on Facebook, it's Facebook.com slash LGBT Charlie. LGB on Facebook, which mm -hmm. is great. I gotta subscribe. I know we're, we're friends on Facebook, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And um, so I keep try to keep up on your link. That's why I maybe first saw the American Idol clip was on your Facebook. Yeah, page. I did a throwback Thursday, so people didn't forget my six minutes thank, of fame. Thank God. <laughs> I'm so glad you did because I had no idea. This is my first interview I've ever done about it too. The only other one I had, I slept through, <laughs> and they bashed me on the radio. They were oh like, "Oh, she's God. too big for us." I was like, oh. "Well, Sorry. you were fabulous. Thank you thank so you. much, Charlie. Thank you so much thank for having you. me. Do we shake? Do we shake? Is that yes, let's shake. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.